So, version 1.1 of Butterfly is finally out. And user Mystery Man requested on the forums that we make a tutorial explaining the new slide keyframe. The slide keyframe was something uh, requested by another user, Drexigar, I think is how you pronounce it. And it's a way to move cells around on the screen without having to copy and paste them over and over again. Uh, as an example of what I mean, let's take a look at this sample animation. Now here you see a bunch of objects moving across the screen. If you were to do this in the original version of Butterfly, uh, it would take a lot of time to copy and paste each of these objects as they slide by on the screen. And not only that, you'd quickly run out of cells because each of these would, each of these positions would take up a separate drawing. With the slide keyframe, we only have to use one drawing and you can move the object all the way across the screen at any angle. Uh, so in order to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is recreate this sliding cloud layer. So let me start by deleting the existing cloud layer and I'll create a new layer and rename that clouds. So there we have a new blank layer and then I'm going to use the polygon tool to draw some simple clouds. Now, as I said, in the original butterfly, you'd have to use the select tool to outline these, copy, paste them back on a bunch of different frames, and you'd have to waste all your cells doing that. We don't need to do that anymore with the slide keyframe. Um, what we can do is open up the timeline, go to frame zero, and say add keyframe. And then here we have the different types of keyframes listed along the side. The last one here is slide. And here are the controls for the slide keyframe. You have an angle, the speed, and the start position, and then an acceleration toggle. So let's start with the start position. Here I can move to the right or to the left. And that position actually takes into account the angle. So if I change the angle, say up to 60 degrees, then when I'm moving right and left, it goes in that direction. So it's moving in a positive or negative direction along the axis of your movement. So we want our clouds to move from right to left. So what we need is an angle of 180 degrees. So you can see by that little line there that's going to move in this direction. Now these sliders are configured so that it, they don't seem to really match when you're moving, but that's done on purpose so that you you can cover an 800 pixel range just in this small screen space. Basically, like if you move a little bit, you can move by one pixel increments, but then the more you move, you move in larger increments. So what we want to do is start just off the side of the screen. So about, an, let's say, a value of about 360. Uh, 365. Oops, I hit play. So 370. And then the speed, um, let's set a little bit slower. Let's try a speed of 5. Okay. Now I've got my keyframe on frame 0, as you see. And if we hit play, there's our cloud sliding by nice and slow and we only had to use one cell to do it. Now, they only slide by once when we want them to actually keep sliding by to look like there's a lot of clouds. So in order to do that, all we have to do is just place a second keyframe on the timeline once the first set of clouds has passed by. So we add keyframe. All the settings for the slide stay exactly the same. So here they slide again. And then we'll just do that over and over again as many times as we want the clouds to slide by. Now for this third slide, let me show you what the accelerate does. So I'm going to turn that one on for the third slide. And let me turn off these other layers just for this. So here's our first pass with the clouds. Then it hits that second keyframe and starts the second pass. 
When it hits the third pass, you'll see this motion looks a little bit different. It starts out more slow and then speeds up as it goes. So this is just some, a way to give your uh, objects sort of an acceleration if you want them to start from a standstill and then smoothly start moving rather than just instantly start moving at the speed that you set. So that ends the first part of this tutorial, which is moving a single cell layer at you know at the speed and angle that you want. Now, in the second part of the tutorial, we're going to take a look at this second layer, which is a bit more complicated. Okay, for the second part of this tutorial, we're going to take a look at this house layer, where I've got several different cells sliding by as the car drives. So the way that you do this is a bit more complicated than the clouds, so you can consider this part of the tutorial uh, for advanced users. Um, we're going to start by, I'm going to erase all of the keyframes that I have on this layer so that I can start from scratch. So I say erase layer. I don't want to erase the cells though, I'm going to leave the drawings and I'm just going to erase the keyframes. So now let me turn off these other layers and you can see here's my house layer and on each cell I've drawn a different object that I want to slide by. And in addition for this rocket I've actually drawn a sequence of five or six, maybe up to ten little animation frames. Okay, so we want to get those to slide by in the same way that we did the clouds. So it's easy enough to start with. We're just going to start by adding a keyframe, slide, and then I've got the same angle. Um, I think I want the speed to about fi be about 15, and the start position is just off the edge of the screen there. Okay. So then when I hit play, you would think that the house would slide by, but instead it's looping, and that's because the default behavior for a layer in Butterfly is to loop through all of its cells. So what we need to do is tell it to just hold on that house uh, cell as it slides by. So to do that, what we need to do is take our slide keyframe and move it forward one frame, and then on frame zero, we're going to add a hold keyframe. It says hold on cell zero, and while it's holding on cell zero, then start the slide. Okay, so now when we play it, there goes our house. Now in order to get the other objects to slide by, we just add new slide keyframes. So here we're going to add keyframe, hold on cell 1, and then on the next frame, slide. All these slide settings stay the same, we don't need to change those. And then we have our, ha our store sliding by. And same thing with, oops, let's see. Same thing with the castle. We're going to have a hold, hold on cell, z cell two, and then add a slide keyframe. And for the, then let's next do the rocket. I'm going to skip over the zoo. So add keyframe, hold on the rocket. And actually, I don't want to hold. I want to actually, I want this, instead of just holding on the single rocket frame, we want it to play through a range of frames. So instead of this hold keyframe, I'm going to go back and replace that with a play keyframe. And so we want it to say start on cell 5. That's the first frame of the rocket animation. And then play, uh, let's say at a rate of like, 12 maybe. Let's try that. So now it starts on that frame and then you can see it plays through its range of frames. keeps going. Okay, so then just like I did with the other cells, right after the play keyframe, I'm going to add the slide keyframe which will take care of the left, uh, right to left movement. So here if I play it, there you see it plays through my cell animation as it's sliding with the slide keyframe. And then finally let's add uh, uh, one more, let's see, we'll go back and put the zoo in there. And then add its slide keyframe. Okay, now you would think we'd be done, and I wish we were, but due to the nature of keyframes and the way 
it's provided for you to do different things, we have a bit more work to do. And here's what I mean. If we play this, you'll see that each time one of those cell switches, there's a glitch. And this is where it gets advanced, so feel free to skip this part or decide you're not going to do this kind of animation ever again. Here's what we need to do. Every time there's a glitch, it's, it's where I have this hold keyframe. And that's because the hold keyframe is absolute. It says hold on this uh, cell and it doesn't pay any attention to the slide keyframes. We may fix this or change it in a, another update, but for now this is what you have to do to fix that. You have to actually lower the opacity of that hold so that that glitch doesn't show up. It's kind of a hack. Oops. Okay. Now, even now we're not finished though because if you take a look, now everything, there's no glitch, but everything fades out. And the reason for that is because keyframes, by default, they evenly change from whatever the first keyframe opacity is to the second keyframe opacity. So here, for example, we have a slide keyframe with opacity 1, if you look at the beginning, and we're transitioning to a hold keyframe with opacity zero. It doesn't know that we want it to be a smooth click. Like, we'd rather it just stay at opacity one for all this distance and then just on that frame go to zero. So we have to do one more thing and that is add a hide keyframe just before here with opacity one. The reason we do that is just to have the opacity be one during this whole range. Like the start is one, at the end is one, and that will keep it from fading out. It's kind of a kludgy solution and like I say maybe we'll be able to address that in the next update but for now if you want to do this kind of animation this is the only way I know of to deal with it. So basically you just need three keyframes at each time you want to uh, change your object. And now let's turn our layers all back on. And there you have, oop, I think I forgot, to, I forgot to change the opacity on that very first keyframe. Okay. There we have a reasonable facsimile of the animation that I showed at the beginning of this tutorial. Please feel free to post in the forums with any other questions or requests for tutorials that you'd like to see. And thank you for watching.